Alrighty, hello, and good morning, every folks. So, last night uh, I was kind of debating uh, how to uh, how to continue on with this run, because there were two options. Uh, basically, the options were either A, just kind of uh, kind of go back, read. Well, I guess I'm kind of doing these backwards from how I did the poll. Um, but basically, either go back, uh, start from scratch, and pick a different uh, different route through the game. Uh, just basically defecting early in order to get a better plane, or B, just frickin' get good. So, went for the B option. So hopefully, uh, hopefully should be able to, uh, oops, immediately screwed up even, even entering it right. Fantastic, great way to start. Anywho, um, hopefully with any luck here should be able to pull it off. Because last night I literally just kept grinding this out until I was able to do it three times in a row. So, anywho, away we go. Uh, it's stuttering a little bit. Let's just give it a second. And that's fine. It'll be back. Uh, but basically, um, I, I did the same thing that I did for the rocket run. Um, so, what I was uh, so what I needed to do was figure out uh, different ranges and different speeds for different things, and uh, found out a little bit of a, a little bit of a trick to all of this. So, either way, let's. Uh, Let's pull this up first of all. Not get bamboozled by the little uh, little delay there. And it's apparently deciding to be weird right off the bat. Fantastic. And yeah, I decided not to uh, not to go the route of um, of just getting the uh, uh, the regular PS1 ROM. Largely because that thing's download size is disgusting, and it just wouldn't do it yesterday. So. Thankfully, because of that, you know, got better at the thing, so I guess little little blessings and whatever, but here's what I noticed. So, for one thing, um, while I was taking a lot of other things into account, what I didn't take into account is how the game handles some of its weight physics. Um, because honestly, I figured PS1 game, there's no way it possibly handles weight physics, but I kept playing around with it. And sure enough, that whole uh, really, uh, really high speed stall thing with the, uh, with the Super Hornet, it's actually potentially very useful. Um, uh, so yeah, b basically being a big old chunky plane, uh, since for some dang reason um, the thing's just like twice as heavy as everybody else, so there's that. So let's look, look this over real quick. So I got the same old mission thing as before, but yeah. So like looking at the weights here, this one's uh, uh, 181, this one's uh, 180, this one's thir uh, <laughs> almost uh, thirty thousand, and then this one's uh, down to eleven. So the the uh, the Gear Falcon, which yeah, apparently it is supposed to be Gear Falcon, not Gear Falcon. I'm still gonna pronounce it weird. Don't know why. Mr. Braxton, why are you randomly growling at a vacuum cleaner? Weird dog. Anyway, so yeah, um, basically this thing was having issues maneuvering simply because it was too light. Supposedly. At least that's the, the running theory. But yeah, this thing um, wound up being surprisingly good when I kept uh, going and testing it out over and over and over. The other thing that I figured out... Uh, hold on just a moment. Sorry, not sure why the dog's acting up. Anywho, so yeah, the... Uh, uh, the fal or not the Falcon, but the uh, the Super Hornet here. Um, basically, it, with the uh, the heavy MG. Wait, did I switch it to the heavy MG? Crap. Ugh. Whiny dog got me distracted. Uh, whatever. We'll, we'll try it with the regular MG. We'll. No, you know what? I I was practicing it with the heavy. We'll do it with the heavy because what I found out is there's no reason not to use the heavy. Uh, while the range thing is a thing, if something's not moving, um, basically the the uh, the shots will decay before it has the chance to hit something. If it has no chance to hit something there, so being able to hit something while the shots are functionally invisible is not really going to do very much good, regardless of how far away it is, because uh, you'd basically have to be turned all the way around to have any of the, uh, the light machine gun shots have any chance of actually hitting anything. But this thing, the Heavy MG, is consistently about a thousand um, in terms of where it'll hit. Um, so yeah, you can actually reasonably hit within the screen boundaries. Um, and on top of that, it seems to do about uh, about twice as much damage. So that's what what I was testing out yesterday. 
that's what seemed pretty consistent. So, um, so yeah, I just kind of kept grinding this one out until that, uh, that turned out to be a thing. Now, at this point, it, it, it makes it look like you can shoot down Keith. I'm not actually sure if you can. Because uh, I've I've gone and shot that one down before, but I believe he just flies around as a neutral for the most part. But okay. Let's get this to go. Do a, probably a couple quick warm-up attempts before this actually ends up functioning properly. Uh, but yeah, was was pretty happy with the results last night. And right after this, it turns out it's not actually two other missions, and we don't even have to do the whole defecting thing, so we can stick to any route that we want, because we get access to the uh, Delphinus regardless of what route we end up going. So there's that. So why am I doing it this way? Yeah, another thing I noticed is, because it's heavier, they seem to be less, um, less willing to try and do that weird maneuver for this one. Like, they don't seem to to see it as being able to uh, to be tricked by that whole slowing down and flying away thing. Um, so despite the fact that it says its uh, top speed is slower, it, it winds up actually being uh, being the fastest one that we have available as far as I can tell. And as long as you're going fast enough, they don't do that BS maneuver, so... I mean, seems pretty well and solid. And if I suddenly go quiet for thinking time, well... Let's see because that's exactly what's going on. So yeah, it tur <laughs> turns out going all Xenonauts mode on this was the answer the whole time. Um, these neutrals, though, aren't really any easier to hit, so unless it's on the way to one of the other ones, I probably won't bother. Uh, simply because, yeah, they're a pain to get any shots off on. But after this, it's just the, uh, the obligatory canyon run. And then after that, um, it's one more escort thing. But I'm thinking with the amount of uh, ground attacks you get going the uh, 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 Fiona's sister becomes the internet route. I don't know what it's, <laughs> what it's actually called or what fans call it or whatever else. It's just basically what happens. It's just a, a bunch of stuff happen. Well, a bunch of stuff gets destroyed. There's this drone thing, and then you blow up the drone thing, and then she just is the internet now. It's weird. This whole game's weird. I kind of love it for that. But yeah, so like I was saying, as long as you're above a thousand, they don't try to do that weird maneuver. Or it's probably not a thousand. It feels like it's above eight hundred or so. But having them stick at this kind of range is a lot more comfortable. Uh, they don't seem to want to run away as much, so that's nice as well. It's just a good situation. So three minutes in, we've already taken out two of them. Not even approaching the time limit right now. So that's handy. And he's toast. We're almost. Dang it, probably needs like one more shot there. Actually, if we had headbutted him, that probably would have been it. Interestingly enough, if uh, two uh, two planes do a headbutt, it seems like they consistently will do about 20% damage to each other. Something along those lines, anyway. So, oh yeah. And also, the secret the whole time was also figuring out how to do these little flippity flips off to the side. So if you just suddenly uh, suddenly break do a little half circle maneuver and then immediately turn the thrusters back on. Uh, is this going to be enough to finish it? Almost. I'm actually not sure if this is the same one. I think this is the same one I was just hitting. Da -da 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 -da. These little kind of half circle maneuvers circling all over the place instead of trying to use the rudders definitely does the job a lot better. So all this worrying about rudders was only for the canyon runs after all. And yeah, sorry, I, uh, I keep pausing awkwardly today. Like, I made the coffee kind of weird, and... I don't know, it just kind of keeps causing my throat to do weird crap today. What can you do? Sometimes make your own homemade coffee creamer, and it results in some odd chemistry effects. Oh, hell no. It's even got a lock on me right now. Look how much better this is! Like, I think I legitimately might not even want to go to the flanker. I just really like this plane right now. 
Well, actually, I don't plan to use the flanker anyway. I plan to use the Delphinus. Just because that thing is super stable. I really hate the mission after this, though. It's like, basically... Uh, it, it's a mission you see in Armored Core a whole bunch, where it's like, to follow somebody through this security net kind of thing. But then at the very end, they've got the unfortunate thing where you are in a jet, and then they decide to have you fly through a bunch of tiny holes, and then usually end up hitting the sides, because the tiny holes have some weird aerodynamics to them. It, what I mean by that is kind of weird, I'll explain that in a moment. But it's like, it's just basically these weird canyon holes that your plane's always going to try to fly upwards a little bit, because it's a plane, and that's what it's made to do. And so if you try to fly sideways, yeah, there's that maneuver I was talking about, to just fall out of the, uh, uh, fall out of the stall there. But yeah, so if you try to fly sideways, if you're trying to do this weird zigzag thing, it causes you to basically have to fly sideways and upside down through a canyon hole. It's just a weird time. Alright. Oh, nobody. Oh, crap, I didn't think that would have a chance to hit. Kinda looked like we had properly dodged it. Alright, neutral, kindly piss off. Didn't to finish this guy off. He got a few more hits. He probably needs maybe four or five more shots on him. Yeah, because of the extra weight, we're doing these little rolls on top of having that extra weight is pretty handy. Yeah, so off neutral. But yeah, also was having a decent bit of extra success uh, when it came to dodges by, well, just go always going opposite the arrow there. Uh, didn't quite work out for that first example, but for that second one, it seemed to break their lock fairly effectively. Oh, another thing I noticed is they don't dodge as much if you're not actively firing, so it's not that they're detecting your lock-on, they're detecting your shooting, as far as why I'm not just holding the button down anymore. So, I suppose they could be seen as more advanced AI, I'm not sure. But if you just stay behind with the lock-on, they mostly seem to try to outrun it. So yeah, it, it's entirely just becoming the rocket run all over again. All right, get a few more scratches. I really thought that would have finished him right there. Okay. Didn't quite handle that right. I can't. I can't uh, circle out of the stall right now. I got two neutrals on the tail though. That's a problem. Alright, one of them pissed off. One of them's still over there. Probably can catch up at any point. If I can just get a few lucky shots, then we're done here. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to bank out of the way. Yeah, can take one quick strafe and then gotta get out of his lock there. But see, I'm, I'm getting better at this. Definitely a bit more quiet than usual, but hey, focus time and all that. Another thing I found out is that, yeah, these uh, long range snipe shots actually do have a chance to hit, and there we go. Fantastic, it's done, finally! There we go. Screw those four planes in particular. But yeah, Super Hornet's my new favorite. At least for the dogfighting missions. All the crazy flippy moves. Just flipping all over, spewing all over. <laughs> I, I love these little replays and I, you know, I thought it didn't give you the option to save them. And then I left the uh, intro screen running for a while and it actually seems to cycle through the last few uh, a little, uh, little replays that you've done. Like, I think it auto-saves them onto your file or something. 
It's probably gonna be a D rank or something. Yeah. Actually, had one really lucky moment on one of the tests uh, last night, um, where I had gone and uh, it, like I was trying to snipe at one of the other ones, and one of the neutrals just came up and just ate a bunch of shots right to the nose. And apparently, if you hit him right on the nose. Um, it actually gives you, like, I think it has, like, a critical effect or something like that, because the guy only took a few shots, only took one quick burst to get rid of him. Alright. So these two are talking about how, hey, you know, war's not great. A and again, both of them seem like casual office workers, yet they're over here being fighter pilots. Just, I don't know, kind of a, kind of a funny thing. As much as I love the setting of this game, these uh, your two star wingmen make no sense at all in terms of what their job is. Like, legitimately, everybody in the UPEO is astoundingly unprofessional. <laughs> Even their best uh, best person there, it, they'll just gladly, just casually leave right before what's effectively a terrorist attack. It's kind of a uh, kind of nuts. Alright. Forget what this movie is about. What stuff happened. They got some fancy playing. So. Yeah. So, what she's saying here is well, basically, she has to rehab from her plane getting randomly shot out of the sky because the thing just exploded. So, you're supposed to casually go through a canyon run. And finally, we get this thing. You actually get a few things. Uh, so you get the uh, uh, Astrozoa, which we're not really going to be using this time. It's it's very bulky, but in terms of actually hitting anything, it, it's not going to work. Also, its general bulk would be nice, except for the fact that it um, it's too bulky. The thing cannot maneuver worth a crap. Um, it's the first one you get that has multi missiles, though, and those are pretty fun to use. But we can't use them in this run. Screw this mission, though. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, you can't even get controls until after they're done with their dialogue. And there's nothing too threatening in this one, except for the fact that you can't fly above the canyon rim. That's a pain in the neck. You just slowly follow this guy. You don't technically have to follow them, like, for what it's worth. If you know the route, you can just go that route. Uh, but there's a few routes to actually get there. And it takes a little longer if you don't follow them there. Nice music, though. Don't know if anyone's up there in chat yet to say if the audio is sounding alright. Oh, and, um, and yeah, uh, Marina's off in the background there just randomly rambling about something or other. They're kind of creepy. Like I said, they're basically an airplane vampire. It's... it's strange. This game's entirely strange. Kind of love it for it. Oh, and by the way, this happens every time that I move my, my hand. It's it's supposed to be one of the back triggers, but again, Vita. So these little guys, funnily enough, are how I was uh, doing those range tests earlier. As you can fly fairly slowly, you get a general idea of how the curvature of your shots works. Unfortunately, there's no test mode in this game. I kind of feel like it would have really benefited from it, but who will? This crap is so slow, but I appreciate these little drones are written in Russian hieroglyphics. And also, no, I don't know what the hell she's up to in her plane there. I don't speak that language, but uh, sounds a little dirty. So there we go. You get to about a thousand, and suddenly the shots start working. So that's how I was determining that basically a thousand is more or less what seems to be the effective range of this thing. And if you're wondering, yeah, if you touch the ceiling at all, they basically just tell you you got detected by radar. I mean, literally, the base we're looking for is just right on the other edge of it. 
or right on the other side of it. It's pretty annoying. You can even see all their little blips on the radar. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, kind of annoying in that regard. We basically just get extra points for these little drones and things. Do this little weave through here. Uh, this is actually the one time in the game that I, well, that I actually would say that a better soundtrack would be nice. It's not that this music is bad or anything, but I can't not hear the canyon music from Warhawk every time. But there's just no better canyon theme in my opinion. Change my mind. <laughs> It's like, even about three-fourths uh, of the way through that piece, there's that weird little... I don't even know what you call it. It's almost like an audio glitch. But even that somehow gives it a little bit more... Uh, maybe flavor? This gives it a little bit more something. mission is so god dang slow. And yeah, there's the first needle that we have to pass through, which, fun note, apparently, I have a needle is also the name of, uh, of canyon that you pass through like that. Thank you, old-timey terms. And yeah, somebody just has a random draw way over there. So, also I can't help but notice that the actual space for when you're supposed to be considered out of the map is pretty inconsistent. Like, in some parts, it seems like it's almost halfway down, whereas, like, right here, you can reach almost over the dang rim, and you're just fine. Not sure what that's about. Alright, so there's the second one, and then there's the bottom one. So it's actually three, not two. My bad. But yeah, it's it's hard to describe why that's a pain, but you, like you you constantly have forward momentum, which continues on with shoving your plane upwards. Oh, come on. No 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 no! Don't do that. It just it, while for the most part of the controls work for this, you do get some occasional jank, and that's one of those times. So to start off with, I don't want to deal with a lot of these things shooting. So we're going to deal with them first. Now we basically just have to hit a little fort over there. But I need to take a couple strafes at it. And there we go, a bunch of shots coming in. a little bit. One more little controlled burst and we're done here. Thank you. Whew, okay. That one stresses me the hell out. Because <laughs> you're just right there. Uh, funny part is, you have a wingman for it. As you can see from the plane flying behind us, which if you run into anything, she'll run into it too. Pretty hilarious. Um... But yeah, doing all these little maneuvers. So, here, you maybe you can kind of tell, but you can see, looking through this thing, that the plane's constantly drifting upwards to a little degree. So, if you try to just turn it sideways, and then try to do, like, a quick turn out of there, you'll usually still have some forward momentum that'll cause you to fly straight into the cliff, because you're expected to do a sort of, like, little Z-shape maneuver there. So, what results is needing to... Uh, to kind of boost past it, as it were. So, she forgot her vacuum cleaner in there. Yeah, 
Now, what she's trying to say is she's got her own custom jet that's pretty sweet, apparently. I, I know that you can get that thing somehow. Um, oh, and even got an A. How about that? But, but here's the thing. Um, translations are weird, so it sounds like she's talking about her vacuum cleaner that she just forgot somewhere, and she's, she's got a bird. It's like, oh, thank you for airplane rehab and not running us into a cliff. That's something. So, hmm. Probably should have put a call out to vote or something. Hmm. So I don't know what a lot of the other missions are in this. There's a lot of different ways you can go. Like, I know if you follow this lady, you can basically... Supposedly, you get her plane and stuff like that. Um, so I'm assuming she gets vaporized by the sun at some point or something. I only know that it's a thing from seeing a video of the um, of the Western release of this thing, which gives you all the planes, um, and seeing that the uh, the Black Ravens listed on there. So I guess that's a thing. I, I don't know. Um, game, please don't. Thank you. I was gonna say, please don't suddenly have your first save glitch ever. Would definitely not appreciate that after that one went so smoothly. Alright, so what's next? Somebody forgot to turn off their ad blocker. Fantastic. Um. Okay. Somebody took her toy train, and apparently it was Dyson. And there's her plane, and then she's over here, but then she's also a science experiment or something. And then some people clapped. And then she was kind of into it. Sound data missing, but there's the sound. Yeah, a lot of them do this, by the way. They're like, hey, don't tell anyone, weird mute guy. Just, just, you can't talk about it. So basically she's saying, would you like to go ditch everybody to go deal with a thing real quick? Now, now that I think about it... Hmm. So if you go with her, you get a dogfight. If you don't, you gotta go shoot at stationary objects. Seems pretty clear to me. Curiosity, what? Does this thing get the cannon? Yes, it does get the cannon, so... Alright, whatever, we'll use the cannon. Alright, so automatically, you're given the option to leave. However, then you're told, hey, come back, and you have the option to either go back or don't. So we're gonna go ahead and go back. Later, Psycho Lady. Like, I know she's supposed to be mysterious or whatever, and you're supposedly getting a fancy plane out of it, but, man, I'm, I don't know. I really don't like that lady. She freaks me out. <laughs> so we're just going to go back. Okay. Then your debriefing is that some people did some terrorist crap, and you should probably go deal with that. And so you immediately go back, land, and then take off again. So, yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Because what, what the guy probably should mention is not, hey, there's an emergency. Probably should mention, hey, somebody's trying to literally, like, gas an entire town. I don't know, maybe don't bother looking into personal crap right now. Got stuff to do. Um, so yeah, this happened. So this is the the, uh, the space dolphin, as I like to call it. Um, this is probably going to be the hardest boss of the game. So, he, or at least something that looks just like this. So, for this one, they just use this kind of model. Um, a bigger version of this is used as a boss later. I, I think that's how that works. Um, right. Let's use the Astrozoa for this, just because it's got the cannon on it. Um, it's going to help a little bit in terms of um, in terms of what we have to do here, because most of what you're doing is shooting at stationary stuff. But basically the idea is that this thing is what you're actually going after. You can't 
actively go after it, like you're not allowed to shoot at it. What you need to do is blow stuff out of its way. Which involves leveling about half the city in order to save the city. It made sense to somebody. Let's find out where exactly we have to shoot this thing. Okay. So there's fine. If it falls on you, you're fine. So this is another one that we might be able to A rank. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little inconsistent. I was really hoping... I, so, by the way, I should point out, this thing has no maneuverability. That's why I didn't even try. Like, look at that. There, you're not dodging anything if you're not killing it first. So, this is probably going to be the only time we're going to use this stupid thing. Also, funnily enough, despite having two fuselages, this is the only time that that I'm aware of that you don't have a gun, like, directly off to your side somewhere. Right, so that's gonna work. Now, I believe there's a couple different routes for the, the, uh, the thing to take. So you kind of have to stick by it and circle around and stuff like that. Uh, you rarely get more than a couple uh, attempts to actually down anything. Uh, but the idea is that they filled this, like, uh, hot air balloon, or not air balloon, but they basically filled a zeppelin with poison gas. And so you're supposed to, uh, to blow everything out of its way and try to shoot it down in the water. Which, it, it kind of just crashes into the water, you don't really necessarily have to do that. Now, I think the same rule applies from before, uh, where we can just kind of blow stuff out of the way here. Yes, yes, yes. Um. Yeah, no, we're, I think we're probably just dead. Nope, nope. Okay, barely pulled it out. Yeah, it was a pretty intense stall. Stop stalling. This thing is so janky. <laughs> that it has multi-missiles and all that, but it's such a piece of crap. Also, it kind of sounds like a pharmaceutical product. It's the Astrozo. It's probably a constellation or something. They ain't exactly subtle about their naming conventions. Okay, apparently the blank space there is enough to cause a crash. Alright, how about we get a plane that doesn't suck? Or not. Does it hit the restart button? Indeed. Screw it. so many cool moments.
just taking a different route this time. I mean, one way or another, you eventually get to the bridge, and you literally have to blow the, the main bridge in the city in order to get the thing to land into the water, which is weird, because you're still landing it in the water even if you shoot it down at that point. They just decide not to let you do it there. And for some reason, then they deploy everything on a tiny speedboat. It's weird. Why? You gotta hit so many... <sighs> So apparently that rule from before, where they stack up damage before they actually exist, is not a thing here. Alright. Good to know. A little annoying, but good to know. Again, understandable. PS1 inner jank, I understand it. Getting a little bit. Oh. I mean, it's a good thing none of the residential buildings were in the way, and it was only these gigantic. Seemingly uh, pointless chimneys. Uh, Any time now, thank you. I almost wonder if the cannon just doesn't register some of its rounds, because there's seriously sometimes it just makes no sense in terms of like how many shots something takes. Like that one took what, maybe four, four or five in total. And the other one probably took twenty plus. And granted, I don't know how many of these are registering or any of that, which is kind of odd. Okay, that one did stack damage. So maybe they just take reduced damage? second pass because the thing's right behind. Alright, and there's the bridge. That would mean there should be three steps left to this. So you hit the bridge, then you hit the little, uh, bit. then I think you have to land and fight a thing, and then you gotta hit the uh, little speedboat. So we'll see how that works out. Probably HMG would be better for the speedboat phase. That's probably a little hard to explain why this is a good idea to the locals. Like, oh yeah, local psycho in what's apparently a hydrofoil turned into a plane decides to go and get rid of our main bridge. Where's this thing go anyway? Not even sure there's another city at the edge of this. I mean, the map goes quite a ways. I'm sure that's for something. I guess to be fair, they kind of have a land route there. So, eh, it's fine. As Eric is just flying around up there doing absolutely nothing. Hello there, Mr. Proko. How's it going? Yeah, so now we just kind of patrol around while the thing lands. There. 
to slow down and attempt not to stall out for once. So what I'm going to do is kind of a little, uh, little Z pattern here. It's pretty soon it will end up crash landing, and then we got to be able to hit the speedboat right then and there. Nope, I did it too soon. Lame. Yeah, we're doing HMG on this one. I'm really sick of this plane. Hold on, we gotta get through the... Okay, apparently we don't have to get through the dialogue first. But no, um... Need the, uh, the Delphinus for this one. Screw that noise. <laughs> the Astros is just such a piece of garbage. Um, there we go. We took two RVs and we slapped them together and then we, we put some wings on it. It's an airplane. Why'd you do that? Well, we could fit a cannon on it. Any other reason? No. Well, what's everybody else got? Oh, you know, tiny maneuverable planes also with cannons on them. Oh, wow. Yeah, the HM you know what, no. HMG is just better than the cannon. Screw that. That information was completely wrong. As far as I'm concerned, the cannon is literally worthless. Please explode. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Engage. Either way, it's good to have maneuverability. Yes, I could have avoided that thing. I didn't think I needed to. I thought we could just push through it. Um, plane, what are you doing? That was really weird. I think we've just failed it immediately. Try that again. Oops. Yeah, let's fix the video real quick here. See, this is why I like doing uh, doing like challenges for for games I don't know terribly well. Like, it, it's just fun. It's just fun to figure this stuff out in ways that, are, like, it wasn't exactly... It, I don't have years of norms or whatever else that I'm used to to compare this against. Blow up, please. Come on. Anytime now. Please. What the hell just... Okay, I don't understand what's going on there. Because its entire hitbox seems to be the whole thing. I guess we'll try for just the center then. See so how much of a difference that makes. Yeah, okay, so it's just the center. I'm just being dumb, that's why. Being a dumb dumb. Yeah, this is where I wanted this plane. I really like this thing. It's a flying dolphin. Actually, what I find really funny is that when you look in the in the uh, look through emulated games and things like that. Um, under simulators, uh, you'll find stuff like uh, like critical depth, but you won't find uh, you won't find this. Because for some reason, flight sims have their own category because there's apparently just so many of them for the PS1 and PSP. But uh, yeah, I was confused for the longest time why none of the Ace Combat games were sh were showing up as um, showing up as simulators. It's like I know there 
they're technically kind of arcadey and things like that, but I mean, it's definitely more of a simulator than Critical Depth. What's that simulating? Like death matches and submarines? Is that a thing you simulate very often? Pretty neat game. Very dark endings. It's probably the only game that I know of that your your main characters literally end up getting dissected in one of the endings. So like, wow, you guys, you guys are really selfish. We gotta rip you apart to figure out why. Yeah, you literally can't even hurt these until they're ready to be a plot item. Let's see here. It's freezing up like that uh, every so often in the game, or it's a stream thing. No, it's um, it's a matter of recording off the Vita. It's uh, it basically if there's a drop in connection between the Vita and the computer. Um, so like if the if the cord acts up or whatever else. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's just that. Um, in terms of if everything stops altogether and then starts back up, that would be a stream thing. <laughs> Interesting logic. This little machine gun rips an entire concrete bridge in half. around. Um, in testing, I found it much easier to just fly all the way to the back of the bay here and get a long run to be able to catch up to a guy. Um, in some other tests, I found it easier to approach them head-on because they don't fire as much from head-on. So I'll just do somewhere in the middle and go attack from the side. But anyway, Mr. Cat, what kind of freezes are you seeing there? Missions like this are cool and all, but it really does take a while. It's like it's this and most of the canyon runs, and it's like I, I just wish that uh, they were a little more forgiving with the sudden death stuff. Update target. Say the two pilots that never actually help with anything whatsoever. Okay, a few points. Oh, jeez, that thing hits hard. Mission failed. Hmm. Maybe we do need to go regular MGs on this. It seemed like it was probably about seven, eight hundred that the shots started coming in. So if we do shots from about a thousand away, just keep taking planks at it. it seems to be moving reasonably fast. Maybe we can get some more that way. Again, main takeaway from this game: 
For some reason, the ultimate super weapons are freaking boats. And all your gigantic flank fortresses and things like that you see throughout the series. All well and good. None of them is threatening as tiny boats for some reason. It's actually one of the one of the reasons I was looking forward to ACX. The uh, it, honestly, the, uh, the the fortress fight is probably the most fun part of the game there, which is weird because it happens in the first third of the game. It's literally the the first third is dealing with with the fortress. The second third is dealing with a obligatory giant laser, and then the uh, the third one is uh, dealing with a whole bunch of uh, just a crap load of planes. It takes forever. But for some reason, they start off with the most fun fight. We literally have a giant flying fortress that at one point gets annoyed and flips itself upside down so that it can electrocute the sky. So you watch the VOD and you'll see it kind of stops moving for a second and then skips ahead. Yeah, that's the, um, that is entirely the, uh, uh, the stream thing. It just does that at random. I have yet to figure out a reason why. I thought it was my computer, but when I went back and looked through it, it seemed like it was just Streamlabs. Um, hopefully it isn't too bad. By the way, Mr. Cow, uh, is the sound working properly? Because I, I know that the the, uh, the first VOD of this whole thing, the uh, the sound was awful. Like I, I apparently had the uh, game sound up way. You yeah, know that's right. Uh, the game sound up way too high. Basically floating Project Phantasma, so that's fun. Its accuracy seems, accuracy seems trash at long range, but it's still doing like 10% damage per shot. So we really can't take too many hits from it, and any direct burst and we're basically dead. Um... down maybe I wonder if by any chance the uh, the helpers will fly in. If they're getting shot out. Okay, that hit. I saw the spark. So yeah, we can just drop shots on it from above. And that was actually out of the 1,000 range, so... That is ridiculous. Mission failed. <sighs> yeah, we'll try regular MGs.
Okay. Hmm. Alright, Hornet. Let's see if you're gonna be our savior yet again. Effective against these. With any luck, maybe this will have enough range to just blink and run. And just maybe we get lucky. I know that thing doesn't have too much health, but still. Legitimately, just reroute and stick with the Super Hornet. <laughs> uh, seriously, if this works, I just have my favorite plane now. Because the more that I think about it, I really don't think I want to do the Newcom route. For one thing, there's a far more difficult fight a couple parts from now. I don't know if it's next mission or the one after it. We have the option of either dogfighting a crapload of jets or shooting down one stationary one. Um, and yeah, uh, the uh, the Newcom route is to uh, to go and try to save the jet. At which point, you're basically bamboozled into going and joining their faction, and then you're stuck with only the Delphinus for the rest of the game, pretty much, and the uh, the flying coffin plan, as they call it. But either way, basically the same thing. Yeah, this this route's entirely different this time it looks a bit. kind of determines a few factors, like what route they're going to take. Looking at it now, I've actually never seen it take this route, so I guess there's three routes that it can potentially take. That's got to be fun for speedruns. Do an amazing job throughout the entire game, only to get to the very end and realize that the thing decided to take the longest possible route and then validates your record. I guess less invalidates more ruins. Is such a casual stall. Just kind of slide a little bit to the side, get right back to flying. As opposed to the uh, the weird Astrosa thing where it's like you stall and suddenly you're just hitting the ground. 
I'm sorry. You have to you have to spend the next 30 minutes attempting to get out of this stall. Good luck not moving. Can we slap two planes together again? You know, Jim over in design got really drunk one day. He had two designs for a plane. They both were identical. They just kind of happened to be flipped, and we thought, hey, just flip them around, slap them together, see what happens. I mean, things suck, but we put a cannon on it, so that's that's got to be something, right? is, yeah, if you go the Newcom route, you basically get a mix of all the other planes. So you get a, a combination of all of the all, all the side weapons, all of the like, multi-missiles, and all this other stuff. I think you get the option of almost every type of uh, weapon there is. Not that they upgraded Delphinus, but... I think our best bet is going to be to very slowly go follow this airship, wait for it to land, and then just immediately lay into the thing as soon as it spawns. And hopefully it won't have time to shoot. Screw that. The text box thing. Forgot about that. So yeah, if there's ever a text box, your shoot buttons don't work. Uh, just for the obligatory PSA on that again. this approach. Let's see if that works. Okay, please, plane. Yes, yes, yes. like uh, Eric is finally doing something for the first time ever. Uh, so if he engages the thing, maybe it'll fire at him instead. Nope. He's just pretending to do stuff again. All I kind of got then is to try and get around the front, try to go really fast, and then just barely get in there and shoot at it before it gets a chance to, to get away. Okay, that method's viable. That method's viable. Um, I think we need to do HMG for that, though. Technically, it's a small target and things like that. We probably want to do more, more spray and pray, but I, I think the HMG is gonna be better for that. crazy space jets and things. Which one did you want to end up using? Oh, you know, this random crap from the 70s is just fine. I think that'll do the job well enough. 
and take the same space, right? Yeah, if we don't the new, if we don't do the newcomer, then we don't go to space. I don't think. Actually, I have no idea what the other routes consist of. I've literally only ever completed the newcomer route and started the uh, the crazy vampire pilot route, and then accidentally overrode it. <laughs> so, uh, so there's that. I think at this point we're locked out of the Vampire Pirate Pilot route. Could be. Dumpster diving outside the building again. Such things happen, I suppose. I kind of feel bad for the guy. I don't, I don't really know why they go dumpster diving in our dumpster, because it's one of the few buildings that has dogs, and I don't think there's poo bags in there. It just doesn't seem like it'd be worth it. There's just so much poo in there. So, welcome to the uh, TMI stream. Seconds away from being a real object. One second. Oh, come on. Bad time for the controls to act up. I don't know if that was legitimately physics or just the controls being weird, but it wouldn't roll left. It might be physics, given how often it happens. It really would be nice if the game would just let me shoot at the stuff that I know that we're going to have to shoot at. I don't know. Nope, still doesn't exist yet. Uh, the reason for it, more than likely, is because it doesn't want to have to mark everything on the map and remember all of the data on the map, so it's just kind of activating stuff as it goes along. While doubling is a sort of immersion feature by saying, oh yeah, we need to figure out its route or whatever else, but... doing right now. Um, is this going straight to the bridge? Okay, apparently that's the thing that can happen too. So, make that four rounds then. doesn't have his hit by it. it's a uh, full, um, or rather it's uh, presumably it's health bar activated because you can hear the little pew pew noise from an actual successful hit, but that's, that's it. Oh, come on, activate it please, it's already almost there. I don't understand, I was just 
just gonna fly over it this time? Weird. That's really weird. It didn't even fly over the bridge this time. It's kind of simple. Fly ridiculously fast and we'll probably get up to 2,000 or so. And then try to approach low. And snipe it. I want, I got one last thing I want to try before potentially calling it for the, for the moment. So we're going to try the Typhoon. But funny thing, by the way, um, the armor rating that it says on the left, I think they have it backwards. Because this one says it's got light armor. It's got the highest defensive rating of well, the second highest defensive rating of whatever we have here. And the exact same as the one over here that says normal, and it says light over here. Go over to the one that has heavy armor, it's got very slightly more, but apparently light is better than normal. Uh, anywho, one quick second. Uh, let me, uh, let me get the kiddo a quick snack so that we can try this one more time. Just a moment.
Okay, so I got a. Uh, yeah, one more go before I gotta call it for the moment. So here's our here's our options with the different plans as far as I see them. So this thing we already tried the first time around of just trying to use the heavy armor to tank it. It it's garbage. No, um, it it still got shredded in seconds. Um, we got this thing which has no defense to speak of. So even though it's got a lower profile. It's not exactly going to work. Um, also, by the way, um, if you could tell me, can you hear random nursery rhymes coming through from the background? I don't know how, uh, how well this thing picks up stuff from the background, so worth checking. Um, the Gear Falcon, um, I think it's already kind of done its purpose for the run. I, I, I don't really see it being terribly useful for the rest of this. Um, like it's, it's supposedly got a better top speed, but... We'll see. Um, like I will say, this thing seems to actually have the better top speed of all of them, um, but unfortunately, it's it's still not quite getting there. Uh, let's see. Defensively, like I, I don't know. Maybe the Typhoon has a little more defense. Like I still feel like the the Hornet with uh, with the light might be the best way to go, with the, or with the Vulcan. Because I was about to try the same thing with the Typhoon, but if its armor is going to basically be the same. What's weird is I think it's that line right there that gets uh, that causes an attempt on, well, an assassination attempt on Fiona in like a mission or two. Like it's up to you whether to shoot her down or not. Although it's like ultimately it's kind of pointless. I think they just sort of happen to be there. See if the Vulcan can somehow do this. doesn't feel like a stall. <laughs> Employing the next 20 years of city builders. I never have tried to go and see what happens if you try to shoot down your wingman. I, I'm assuming it probably just goes straight through them. You never know. I was actually hoping that there was maybe some kind of a secret alternate route or comment or whatever else if you only use the uh, the planes that you're given at the start of the game. Because th there's kind of a badly translated email that uh, that's saying that, hey, you got a bunch of planes from both factions. Isn't it weird how you got all these attack planes? And then, uh, you know, shortly after which, after you've demoed their planes, you have the option to join them. But, um, kind of figured, what if you only stick to, uh, to the original two that you're given? Maybe you'll get something. Apparently it doesn't do anything. Which would have been a cool thing, but I guess it would have been annoying. So 
think what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to shoot down Eric while we wait for the bridge thing to happen. Interestingly enough, you can kind of do this little handbrake maneuver. But for some reason, only on the heavier, uh, heavier jets. I'm not sure if there's a specific name for that mechanic or whatever. But it's pretty handy. Fire some missiles for the purpose of fireworks. This thing's fun, you can do all kinds of swarms and whatever. Alright. I don't know where Eric went. Fiona's here, we'll try to shoot her down. There he is. Whatever. She's right here anyway. I'm just curious whether your shots can actually affect them or not. pretending to do things. Come on! Stop turning off my shoot button. I was about to find out if you can shoot this guy down. Okay, see, I know your shots do is go straight through them. Well, I had to do it for science. Worth a go. longer range than they technically should. The only thing I can realistically hope for is if I fly all the way up, maybe there's a possibility. And we can try the cannon. And the thing is a complete heap of crap, but maybe? I'm gonna try it directly from above. It, surely this won't work. We're 
gonna have to figure out something else on this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, call it for that one for the day. Well, no, okay. One more attempt with a cannon. One more attempt. Because I've got a little bit of coffee left here. It really doesn't matter what you give this thing. into mechanics though. Just basically know that uh, they, they do turn into ghost shots after a while. So given the projectiles used, more than likely the actual range of the regular machine guns is about 1200. HMG is probably about 1000, so this thing is probably about 800 give or take. That's what it's looking like anyway. I suppose it's useful info, but eh. Imagine living in this town right now, though. Some crazy person in what is effectively a flying jet ski thing is going on going up half the city to somehow save it. Realistically hope for is that somehow we get within range about two to three shots of these land, and we're good. I think this thing takes four missiles normally, which, given everything, I think that would mean about three to four of these shots. Hard to say for sure. Uh, since most of the uh, stats that show up on the screen seem completely wrong and/or are talking about other things. Like, I don't know if a bunch of those were mistranslated or what. There's a long bridge face. So it's probably going to do like the whole mid-bay stop thing in this one. So, let's see. I'm give it a few more seconds. I'm going to drop speed to the absolute minimum. And then just slowly glide behind him and try to get a good, accurate cannon burst. Uh, 
license. I think he takes a second to start firing. I know he deploys the second he hits the ground. Found that part out very easily the first time. Or first time through the game, rather. Oh wait, right, he's gonna have a text box, so I can't do that. I keep forgetting that. Okay, weird. For some reason, this time the armor held up a whole lot better. Like, first time through, you got absolutely shredded within a couple shots. This time, we actually tanked about five or six of them and still have an okay amount of health left. I said it was the last one, we're gonna give that one more go because that can work. Engage. If the armor of this thing can actually hold up sometimes, then it's workable. what the stat is. Maybe when it says defense, what it really means is how much overall health it actually has. And then armor's how much uh, damage is scaled down. Probably says it in a guide somewhere. Probably should read one of those guides prior to doing a run like this, but screw it. I can lose some of blind. Start firing before 800. Oh, no. Maybe like a thousand or so. A thousand with some drop off, 800 for directly ahead. Get straight to the hydrofoil section. You don't have to keep redoing this uh, this beginning part.
I'm trying another idea too. So we follow along really closely, it does its whole spawning thing. However, we can still technically start firing before the, before the dialogue opens, and they can't start firing until the dialogue box ends. I don't think, anyway. So potentially that might be an option here. That's the way. That's the way to do it. What's up, Mr. Man? This one on a win. I think ultimately it will come down to just finding the exact spot we gotta be. been misreading it, but as far as I could tell uh, from the MG, um, on the light armor ones, we're, I, I think it, that damn scaling thing is right, because on the light armor ones, we seem to take 11. Um, on the heavy, or on the normal ones, we take 7 uh, per shot. And then on the, uh, on the heavy armor here, we seem to take 4 per shot. It doesn't seem to really affect missiles too much. Like I think it's like 15 or 20 or so uh, damage difference on missiles, but it doesn't seem to be enough to change it from a like one hit kill to a two hit or whatever, or from a two hit to a three hit rather. At least not on this difficulty.
who's supposed to try and attempt. Just gonna circle around and hopefully get it in one pass. If this was built on a similar engine to Warhawk. A lot of stuff looks similar and a lot of the explosions kind of function the same way. I wonder if it was like a copy the homework situation or if they just license it to them or if they just happen to build the same thing. Is every one of those seems possible? It's not like taking all these extra shots. But no, it's not. Yeah, so we'll leave it flying this direction for a quick second. And another sip of coffee. Everything's getting ready to spin around, so let's start heading that way. You know, he's still high up. What the hell just happened? What? Okay, what is going on? Why is it running in fast forward? Um. Okay. unlock or something? Whatever, I guess we're going to fast forward then. I mean, I should point out, this is not really emulating. Like, it basically, uh, the PSP stuff is already there. So this is a PSP running a PS1 game as well, as Sony originally intended. So there's no like, fast forward functions in here. I have no idea what's going on right now. But this is awesome. <laughs> as far as I can tell, it's not doing much different. It's just fast forwarded. Engage thing isn't um, isn't sped up at all. The music is, and everything else is. Why's that one sound not sped up? Thank you. 
Yeah, if there's a way to just play the rest of the game like this, I would be 100% on board. <laughs> I don't want to reactivate the speed glitch. Actually, no, I do have to call it after both these turns. This looks like both kiddos are up now. Okay, and back to wrap it up. Sorry, for some reason, um, it sounded like somebody was trying to walk in. Um, but it sounds like it's somebody that was just going to the wrong place.
戦からこの戦いが発信ギー欲しい。